breakthrough new blood test could literally predict dementia 15 years before people are diagnosed. That, according to a study by researchers at the University of Warwick. Well, joining us now is Research Communications Officer at the Alzheimer's Society, Ian Hartnell, alongside Alzheimer's Scotland social media ambassador, Graham Sutherland, whose mother was diagnosed with dementia at the age of 59. Thank you both so much. Um, Ian, if we just start with you, what, what does this test mean in terms of us being able to identify um, who may develop this condition? So this research took about 50,000 people um, in 2006 and tested their blood, uh, took a blood test from them. And then in 2023, looked at out of those 50,000 people, how many of those had gone on to develop dementia, um, which was about 1,500 of those people. And then they looked in the blood that had been taken up to 15 years earlier and looked for a signature, a signature of different proteins to see which ones were different in the people that had gone on to develop dementia compared to the ones that hadn't and found there was this signature of about 11 proteins that could show the difference um, and this could be a potential way that we could predict somebody's development of dementia in the future up to 15 years before. Ian, yeah, interesting. I, I, read, I read the background on this and you're keen not to tell people that there's a blood test that can sort out. It's about blood markers, like markers you get that show in a cancer test and whatever, and you're talking there about proteins. So what this study is part of is, is an attempt for you to come up with a system of things that people should or shouldn't take that can, in fact, either prevent this or slow it down. That's the message, right? Yeah, so at, um, at Alzheimer's Society, we see this as, as an early, earlier stage than a blood test. A blood yeah. test would require much more, um, much more research and is something that we're hoping for in the future. Um, we are partnering with Alzheimer's Research UK and the National Institute of Health Research on a programme called the Blood Biomarker Challenge um, with funding from the People's Postcode Lottery. And this is looking at actually getting a blood test um, for people who are having symptoms of dementia at the moment, whereas this research that we're hearing about today is more about predicting it in the future. Well, part of a process, I'm guessing. For sure. Uh, Graham, you, like so many families, have got such close uh, personal experience with this. Uh, what's, what's your perspective on saying, actually, maybe uh, we're coming to a point where, you know, years before a, a diagnosis, uh, we, could get, we could get warning of it? What difference do you think that would make? It would, it would make a huge difference, especially in my situation, my mum's dementia was masked by um, depression. My dad passed away, so if we could have at least you know, a bit earlier, we could have prepared Graham, ourselves. Graham, unfortunately, my friend, not your fault, but we're going to have to just stop you a second. The connection isn't great. Let's take him uh, to one side, try and put that right, and continue with Ian. What what Graham was trying to say, bless him. You lose him off the screen when you try and sort him out, please. Is is actually the impact this has on families, uh, Ian, is so so awful. Uh, some experience myself. You can see in Graham's eyes there, and anything. I think anything that that people can feel will give us, you know, an opening. I was telling Rosie before when when after my mother died and my old man wanted, had to move and we went to clear the house. We found these post-it notes, hundreds of them in her bedside drawer. He literally, for three years, and none of us, I feel bad about this, knew about it. You know, get up, clean your teeth, we're going out, literally, to get, and didn't tell anybody. And, in fact, the impact on him as well, and his wider families, isn't it? Yeah, the, it's a de devastating disease. We now know that dementia is the UK's biggest killer, and often we're not talking about it enough. Some people see it as just getting old or having a bit of problems with your memory, but it is a disease and we want pushing for the government to fund more research um, and to, um, we're hoping that there will be new treatments coming this year and we're also running this uh, diagnosis process to kind of make dementia more of a priority in the UK and make the situation better for those living with dementia. Yeah. Um, if you know in advance that you may be at risk of developing mm. this disease, what, what do you do differently as a result? Um, well, if you know earlier and have an accurate diagnosis so that you know either that you're going to develop the disease or that you know that um, your specific diagnosis, you can access specific support because you'll know the symptoms that you will go on to develop. You can access certain treatments that are available now um, that can help with diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Um, you can Ian, also... I'm going to jump in because I've got Graham back. Sorry, mate. I, I want to bring you back in. Graham. Um... We didn't hear what you said, but I, we picked up on, on, on your father sadly passed, your mother had gained depression, and people didn't really know what she'd got. This is a really important story, right? Yeah, so it was masked by depression, so 
we didn't know that she had dementia and if we had some the blood test that could maybe let us know prior in advance we could have prepared for that and be more educated on it because we just assumed she had dementia and eh, depression sorry and it was very hard to actually get a diagnosis so we could have treated her better prepared herself better and had an idea of what was going on instead of her living kind of in fear for for two years without being diagnosed how is she now my friend How is, how is she now, my friend? What is the state? She, oh, she, she's all right. She's not vocal anymore, and she's very agitated a lot. And it's, it's difficult to, to watch because you're just kind of watching her decline very slowly. But she's happy, and that's the main thing. I think that's something I wanted to say, actually. Uh, interestingly, and, and guys, thank you again. I wish we had more time. And, and it is a subject that we should talk about. We shouldn't over-egg it. You know, th this isn't a cure, a blood test right now, but it's progress. The one thing about people who suffer the dementia, and Graham knows this, they're actually OK in their own world. It's actually a lot of the, the ancillary stuff that needs to be dealt with. Thank you so much indeed, both of you, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Graham and Ian, really appreciate it.